Hello and uh, welcome again to a, a discussion with me, Mabon Ap Gwynfor and uh, Liz Savile Roberts, Member of Parliament for Duver Mirionydd on the impacts of COVID-19 on various elements in our communities. Hello Liz, how are you? Very well this morning, hello, how are you? Good, good. And also joining us is businessman from Nevin, Elved Roberts. Hi Elved. How are you? Very well, thank you very much. So, um, Liz, last week in, in our discussion, you mentioned the fact that you were having to go back to Westminster. You've been to Westminster to participate in debates and a vote, and we've all seen, I think, those pictures of the voting. Can you just tell us a little bit before we go on to the, the discussion this morning about all that experience and why was it necessary? I think um, people have seen enough farcical pictures of MPs queuing up, uh, being socially distanced, um, generally jumping through hoops just so that uh, Jacob rees can say that his 19th century museum was pretending to be a workplace. I would, um, just to quantify it, I would have done 12 hours more work at home than the time I had to use on the road. Mm -hmm. And um, we have, I hope there will be some sensible adaptations for next week because there are, of course, there are 100 MPs weren't there. Many of them are shielding or they're with people who are shielding or they're of a certain age and I hope they will be able to participate. But frankly, it makes a, a, a mockery of our democracy. Yeah. And, and can you just confirm, I think a lot of us will have seen some of the video clips that you're doing of your uh, debates on, on video from home. That was working well, was it not? It worked perfectly well. We could contribute to debates and we could vote, which are the fundamental things that we need to do. Mm. And at a time when you know, all our public health authorities, um, England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland are all telling people to work from home when they can, we could. And then Jacob Rees-Mogg stopped it just so he could try and get some backdrop for Boris Johnson and his performances at PMQ, which mm. nonetheless have not improved spectacularly. No, no, I think we've all seen that. It was all very farcical. So, but thank you all the same for all the work that you're doing. Uh, you know, uh, the constituents of Duver Mirioni have lost out on, what, 12 hours of, of your work because you had to drive, but uh, you're working long, hard hours in any case. So thank you for that work. I think we're going to speak to somebody who's doing something a bit more a bit more useful now. <laughs> well, on, on the ground, yes. Uh, Elved has been uh, doing a lot of work in, in the community there with your um, business uh, Spar in Nevin, but uh, you've also got a shop in Abersoch and Aberdaron. Elved, can you just tell us a little bit uh, about the business? Um, you know, you're a big employer uh, and tell us some background around that, please. Um, I employ about 40 people overall with the three stores. I took on Abadaron um, this winter, really, um, and we did the refit, and the shop was open March the 3rd. So within a few weeks, we went into this pandemic. So it's it's been very difficult times, really. Mm. Mm. Um, so so that we've had to adapt and, and you know change things as, as we went along, really. Mm. What, what does that mean? When, when you say adapt, um, you know, how, how have you had to adapt to, um, you know, take in this new uh, pandemic that we've got? Well, at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, it was crazy busy, um, especially mm. in Nevin, um, for about three, four weeks. So coping with that, and that, I'm trying to keep, you know, I, I've got a duty of care to my staff, trying to make sure we keep everybody safe and um, um, get processes and systems in place, which is very, very hard. Um, Abasoch, there was nobody there. there is, Abasoch is a tourist, tourist in place, isn't it? There was nobody there at all. So it went really, really quiet. So we had to change the hours. Um, well, I had to change the hours in Nevin and, and Abbas, Abadaron. Um, so at, at the beginning of the pandemic, I think we were open from 9 till 5, um, seven days a week, rather than 7 a.m. till 10 p.m. Mm. Um, there was no builders coming in. So nobody came in for breakfast or you know snacks in the morning or lunchtime food. So we'd close the deli and the hot food counter and things like that. So it, it was very, very difficult and trying to keep everybody safe was, was, was a big ask, you know, um, very challenging um, and very worrying financially as well. Yeah, yeah. But uh, tangible steps there for you were saying you had to look after the staff. That means uh, letting less people into the shop. It means uh, changing 
where the staff were working or a, a perspex screen or something like that what we had to do we, so we built a perspex screen in front of all the tills um, in nevin we've got three tills four in abasoc and two in abadaran so there was a screen in front of all, all the staff uh, we got them like face masks um, we had hand sanitizers in the door we had to make um, one-way system going into the store so you should shop around the store in the one-way system mm. um, we had to limit people coming in for example nevin would be six people abasoc would be four and abadaran would be three mm. um, and what we did at the start of the pandemic as well was um, some of the staff went off on furlough in order to protect the staff but as well as that if somebody did go ill within my business we could replace them with the staff and bring them back off furlough but luckily enough that's that hasn't happened um, we've been lucky like that and then we had to change uh, the way we did things regarding uh, we started our home delivery service right uh, and, and if so, i could just come in on that very briefly yes. actually, i'm really really personally family grateful because my mother was receiving her food through the home delivery service and I know for a lot of elderly people in the area, and Spa did this and Park Stores did it in, in, in Northern Evan as well. It was a, a, a real um, weight off their minds and off their families' minds that, that they could get you know, good quality food su supplied directly to their doors. And the wonderful thing is the people who were supplying them, the ones that I know about, were, were taxi drivers. Mm -hmm. So that they, were, you know, re that they were working in a different way as well and, and, and they were people that we knew as well. Mm. Mm. So the, the big word that strikes me there is change. You've had to change the way that you work. And, and uh, Liz has touched on that, Elva, that you had to go out a lot more and reach out to the community. What, what does that mean and entail? What, what more have you done in the community now? Um, so, so we're doing the, the, these home deliveries uh, on the community. Basically, the whole of Penicillin, we, we service, um, you know, Nevin, Abasar, Han Abadaron. Mm. Um, but we'd service it through uh, with the farmers as well, with the prescriptions and things through taxi drivers and different people. I won't name anybody because there's too many people mm. to name in, in, in case I let somebody out, leave somebody out, you know. Yeah. Um, but they've been bloody fantastic out of, out of this world. Mm. Um, and it's just people have, have been kind as well. And there's people out there, you know, it was very, very difficult. It had to be fluid with us because you know, we had to take payments over the phone, people had to pay by fax. It was very difficult to set the thing up. So it, it took us a good two or three weeks to get it working properly. Mm. Um, okay, moving on, I have set up an app that will go live hopefully next week, which is Snappy Shopper. Um, but that's just for the more tech savvy people in our community. I think the people that are having our home deliveries at the moment are the older generation, which mm. are so tech savvy. But I'm trying to get it something in between as well to try and take it to the next level. So when we start to release out of this pandemic, people will be queuing to go into it everywhere. Um, and queuing will be the new norm. And it's yeah. okay when you've got sunshine, but you know, when it's raining and, and the weather's bad, nobody's going to come out to the shops and queue outside there, you know? True. true. So th there's a lot of, of best practice being developed with you in Penhean. And, you know, it's heartwarming to hear of of all the good stuff that's been going on and you know thank you for that service that you're providing uh, liz you know i know that you've been sending e-bulletins e out um to people in the uh, constituency and giving a shout out to these various companies that have been doing good things in the communities you've heard a lot about uh, some best practice in duver Marianne. i think this was really striking from very early on i mean obviously the first thing that, that struck me was was the nevin area because this is where i live but straight away there was this pulling together by the community and people like you, Alvid, and also you know the, the two local um, county councillors, um, Gareth Jones and, and Griffith Williams. But this was this is very true throughout the constituency. There's been some fantastic work in Turwin. And again, I'm going to be a bit careful here because I know that I, I, I will miss out not naming people who, who deserve to be named. And I think this is one of the things that we need to do actually, and just mm -hmm. make a point that we check it, that we do reference people who've done fantastic work but there's been pubs throughout the constituency who've been cooking meals for people there's mm -hmm. been people delivering things there's been people of course all the work that's been done in getting ppe um one of the really heartwarming stories right at the beginning was 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 Dovey Gin, who just converted from making gin into making hand sanitizers and distributing it free in south Gwynedd, where actually it was quite difficult to get hold of at one stage mm -hmm. and i do i think this sort of 
real revitalization of the sense of how important communities are. I hope this is something that we can keep going afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, as we move now, of course, the interesting discussion, and we just touched on it with Abbasach and the spa there, is you know, as, as an area that is so dependent on the visitor economy, is how do we get this re-going again mm -hmm. in a way that balances the concerns of people in the community yeah, Abbasach goes from a thousand people resident to in the summer, sometimes twenty thousand people there. Yeah, yeah. How do we balance that concern alongside the fact that we really need this to restart? Mm. You know, we've got businesses like Festuniog Railway facing the three winter scenario, which they describe. You know, this idea that this summer will be as as poor to them as a winter, another winter. How are they going to survive through to there? Mm. And the other tourism attractions alongside the fact that we've had this terrible increase in the number of people who are claiming um, unemployment benefits. Of course, yes. So we're, the next stage now requires careful and sensitive planning as to how we move ahead, but we will need to move ahead. Mm. And, and, and think about moving ahead, you know, uh, uh, was it uh, Snappy Shop Elved you, you were referencing? You've got some other exciting projects uh, in, in the future in the pipeline in the Nevin area as well. Uh, am I right in seeing that you've got uh, few developments uh, Yes, uh, we, we had started um, before this pandemic, uh, uh, we were uh, linked with Cynorgwynedd, um, the Arbor programme um, in Park Aethin. So we were building eight, um, an industrial estate basically to rent to local, local people um, in order to generate some work in the area and hopefully proper jobs. Um, so to try and keep people in the community. Mm. Um, so we've got interest of a lot of people. Um, there's some electricians, um, builders, um, another company, Nevin Sheds. I might take a unit myself. Um, I know the, the Gwyneth Council are going to put one unit, which is going to be a thing called the Fab Lab, which where they'll have some 3D printers and, and things there. Um, there's, so there's a lot of interest regarding these units. Mm. Um, so, but it's 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 good for the area, and it, and it's you know hopefully we can generate some work here. Mm. So as we come out of this pandemic, there's something on the horizon that will ensure that we've got uh, money coming into the area, uh, employment, good quality employment for the area as well, uh, and investment in in Nevin and Penhin. Um, also, uh, we discussed just before coming on um, some of the projects that you've been involved with. I know uh, uh, the local councillor you have there in Nevin, Griff Gwynis, has been um, key in developing the food bank in Nevin, and you've been a part of that, Elved. C can you just uh, uh, touch on the, the food bank and what that means for Nevin and the area? I think they've done a fantastic job. This is Griff's project, basically. I just helped in the background, really. Um, what, what I've arranged is people couldn't go to Pucheli at the time with the buses and things, they used to go to the food bank in Pucheli. Yeah. But there's more than that, there's, you know, self-employed people, warm parents that can't go to work. So, so, and some people are too proud to ask for help as well. So, so and it has been, it has been a, very, a very difficult time for people. So what I realised is there was this service available from Blake Moss. Um, for example, I've had the uh, worth one thousand six hundred pounds of stuff this morning. For I had, a, I think I had a bill for ten pounds for the whole thing, mm. um, and th they're fresh, per perishable stuff. But Griff has been in contact with Manchester Gwynedd as well. So what they do is um, they've got the shop Sharad on the high street in Evan. So basically, uh, they get a, they get stuff off me every Friday, and then uh, they do these. Uh, food bags up for people and just deliver to people in the area every Friday, which has been fantastic. Mm. And, and, and Liz, sadly, we're seeing more and more dependency on, on food banks and the need for these food banks. But, you know, uh, this um, uh, COVID-19 is hitting the most vulnerable and the poorest harder uh, uh, at the moment. Well, yes, indeed. I mean, it's quite interesting how um, Gwyneth Council decided to approach the, the, the free school meals as well. And in the end, they decided that, that they would provide money for families because, of course, one of the, the difficult things is, is, is how you deal with the, with the stigma. How do you actually make sure that you, you reach people who, with, with, with such money most effectively? Mm. But I, mean, I think, I, I, because I, I know that the, the food bank in Portelli, because there's been, again, the, the age of the people who were running out, who've done an absolutely fantastic job. Mm. I think that the, the, one of the town, the, the, the councils in Portelli has taken that on. But to see how it's operated in Nevin, again, an 
this was something that didn't exist previously and how everybody has come together. And I think that the, the, the churches and the chapels are involved in this as well. Um, I just hope that we can keep these, these, these structures into the future um, because these problems aren't going to go away, frankly. It's just that they've been brought out into the open by, 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 by COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, the way that we respond, the way that we, to, 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 to nick somebody else's phrase, build back better, it doesn't have to be the same after this. You know, the, the, the way that we develop our economy to hear about what's happening with the, the, the industrial estate by, by T. Doctor and Nevin. Also, the discussions that are going on about how the visitor economy, on the one hand, is really important to our area, but also how we actually need to, to, to ensure that that contributes to keeping and making our communities stronger, that we have more people who get paid salaries that actually allow them to buy their own homes, for example. We need to keep the lessons that we're learning now and make the best use of them in the future. Because I think it's, it's, it's taken the scales from off our eyes about some aspects of the way that our economy was, economy was operating did not necessarily serve our communities as best it possibly could in the past. And we're going to fix that. Yeah, yeah, uh, and there's an opportunity to change that and ensure that we build an economy from the the grassroots that suits the, the communities and that the community has a buy-in. And that's where you know the work that you Elveda you're doing in your community and others in their communities is going to be so important. Looking forward as we come out of this pandemic, listen, it's been a, a really a real heartwarming conversation. Thank you very much. Uh, for that discussion. Elved, you're doing some tremendous work and, and others around you in Nevin and in Penllyn generally. Um, thank you for that work. Liz, thank you again for the work that you're doing as our representative uh, in Westminster. Um, our time is coming to an end, so I, I think we'll tie the conversation up there. Uh, thank you both very much. Thank you.